This morning, I want to discuss a topic I've entitled First Thing First. First Thing First. And the reason why I'm talking about First Thing First, it seems like most of the time when we are in church or we are in the kingdom of God, we don't pay attention to the things that are important. But sometimes we always discuss things that are not all that necessary. So, I just want to keep us on our toes so that we we'll know the reason why we are called the church and the body of Christ. So that we don't mix them up because you can be in the church and you end up in the other side anyway. And I don't want you to waste your time for nothing. Instead of me complaining about color or chair or maybe the light is too much, uh, the coffee too much sugar, it's better I focus on the reason why I'm here. And it's very, very important. You can have, somebody can give you a car for a gift, but if you don't have the key, it's useless. You just pack that car in your house and you won't use it. So it's very important that the things that are important in the kingdom of God, we need to pay attention to them. So the first thing I will speak about is born again. Born again. First thing first. If you want to be part of the Christian family, you need to be born again. And there are a lot of people that they are in the church, maybe their parents was bringing them to church, so they are part of the family and then they are used to. So because of that, they think they are a child of God. Meanwhile, it's not so. I remember a story of a, a presiding elder that he was in the Church of Pentecost. And as he was in the hospital bed, he called somebody to lead him to Christ. But this man has been a presiding elder, like a pastor, for years. And now that he knows he's going to meet his maker, he's calling that he wants to be born again. So, this means you can be in the church and thinking that you, you are in the church, yes, I've been preaching, I've been singing, I mean, I've been opening doors, I've been helping behind the scenes, doesn't make you born again. You can accept in your heart, but the powerful thing behind born again is you have to open your mouth and declare it. You can't be born again in your heart without you not opening your mouth to declare. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Amen. So you need to confess. You need to confess. Are you born again? That's the only passport that we have in the house of God. For you to be a child of God, that's the passport you must look for. That's the key. So if you are not born again, you have to. You have to. It's very, very important. I mean, the coffee cannot save you. Pastor John making jokes will not save you. And Pastor Johan cannot save you. So it's something that you have to appreciate. So first thing first, you need to be born again. Don't mix that mark. You need to. I mean, you can't be in the house of God for 10 years and you are not born again. We are wasting our time. And I don't want you to. Amen. So I will jump to the second thing you have to pay attention to. If you are a child of God, is reading the word of God. If you are born again, our manual that we are using is the Bible. So when you buy any gadget, even the phones that you are using, you see that they have a small 
piece of paper in the box that shows you how you must use the phone and how important it is, how you must even charge the phone is there. So if you are born again, what you need to do next is to make sure you have the manual, which is the Bible. Today, many of us, we don't have Bible. We have everything on our phone. And we said our Bible is in our phone, but we are not reading the Bible. You know? You'll be holding the phone. As you turn to Genesis, and then you are on uh, chapter 2, you get to YouTube. <laughs> and we are deceiving ourselves. So, first thing first. You are born again. Yes, it's good. It doesn't end there. You also need to be a Bible reader. You have to study on your own. And it's very important because the reason why these days most of us, we call ourselves Christians, we've been lied to is because we don't read the word of God. I was speaking to Pastor John about one of my boss. He was born again, but I don't think he was paying attention to the Bible. So one day he decided to go to a prophetic church. And whilst he was in the church, the pastor was, was having some stones, sharp ones, you know, on the platform. And he asked all the congregation that, there's a direction he wants to do. So if you have money, you come for one stone. And this is a real story. And all the congregation, you call 500 rand, then you go, you take one stone. For, and then people are sitting, they said, okay, if you have 400 rand, you can also come for one. And then they go. Remember, it's the same stone, but with different prices. And, you know, in the church, we still have people who, does it, who cannot bring 500 rand, 400 rand. So it got to 200 rand. Okay, 200 rand, you can also come for one stone. Until everybody have a stone in their hands. So I believe even 10 rand was also, also part of it. And then he asked them, they will all go outside, and then you will throw that stone. And how far your stone goes... That's how your child will prosper. And I don't know if my boss was lucky or not. He said <laughs> he, he felt like he was going to beat everybody. So when he threw the stone, the stone just fell in front of him. <laughs> Why am I saying this? It's because he doesn't read the word of God. If you don't read the word of God, this is how people will deceive you. Because everything that happens in the house of God must have a reflection on the Bible, on the word. Even the Bible said we have to judge prophecy. We have to. So if you go to church, there is a prophecy that you said you had a dream and then you saw maybe a snake chasing you. Doesn't necessarily means that there will be a snake on your bed the next day. No. If not, a king will not dream that small cows are swallowing the big ones. And then the definition came that there's going to be hunger. It doesn't even make sense. But that's how God does things. So our manual is what? The Bible, which is very important. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it, you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Amen. So if you want to be prosperous, it's in the word of God. You have to know the word. You have to know the word. And it's very sad because the things that are happening in the world, it's all because these days we Christians, we are lazy. We only wait, want to wait for Sunday service 
and then one man must preach. We listen, and then that is all. We don't even pay attention. Because now I can quote the Bible, and then I will give you a wrong uh, verse that is there, and you are not paying attention. And I will go scot-free. Yeah, I will. I can quote a verse now and put something that will suit me there. And the church will say, Amen. Whilst I'm lying. You know? So we have to pay attention. It's our responsibility to know the word of God, not the pastor. It's your choice. You have to make that choice. Because you have to make a choice to be born again. You have to make a choice that you want to know the word or not. You know, I can give you a lot of examples when it comes to the Bible. These days we can go to churches and then we have different colors of anointing oil. Yeah. And it's not even anointing oil. It's just this cooking oil, the 25 liter. And then they will just get some bottles and then they will pour them in the bottles. They put colors. So you can get green, yellow, red, any color you can choose. Black is also there. And you find people call themselves Christians. And they are after those things. Thinking that it will save them. But, I mean, it's because you are ignorant. So the Bible says, for the lack of knowledge, my people perish. Why do you perish? Because you made up your mind you want a quick solution. You don't want to study and prove yourself strong. Hallelujah. So ladies and gentlemen, our manual is very, very important. It's very, very important. And the, if there is something that we can do as leaders so that you will be able to read the Bible, we would have, I think Pastor Johan would have done that long time. But there's nothing. We just have to speak to you and you have to pay attention to the Bible. The time that you are watching movie, you can read the word of God. You can read the word of God. If you want to read the whole Bible in a year, just make sure that every day when you wake up in the morning, you read one verse. You start with maybe Genesis chapter 1, you read, and then when you're about to sleep, you read uh, verse 2. And then the next day you continue. The time you realize, you read the whole Bible. So, Every year, you can read the Bible. Every year. And you don't even, if you like, don't even try that you want to understand everything in the Bible. Just read. Just read. As time goes on, the time you will read the Bible like three times in three years, you see that most of the things that are very important you have to know, it will just be with in your spirit. So reading the Bible is very, very important. Point number three, prayer life. You have to pray. And all these things I'm stating is something that you have to take a decision. You need to be saved. Yes, you are born again. And you need to be a Bible scholar. You have to read the word of God. Yes. The reason why number three is prayer is because you can't pray without you not knowing what is in the Bible. You pray with a verse. So if it's marriage you are looking for, there is a verse in the Bible that speaks about marriage. Remember, the Bible said, you must always put me in remembrance. How do you put God in remembrance? Through his word. Through his word. So I know some of us, we have been praying for maybe 30 years. But nothing has happened. It's because you are not going through the right channel. You are just talking to yourself. But the truth of the matter is you can't pray to God without you not basing on the word of God. You can't. You can't. If you are looking for a job, you know the Bible said, any hand that does not work doesn't deserve to eat. 
You know that. Okay. So, if you are praying for a job, there are a lot of verses that you can base on. If you want to be healed from a sickness, there are a lot of verses that you can base on to pray. But when you just go and then you close your eyes, God, I need to be healed. I need to be healed. You can do that for three hours. Nothing will happen. Just speak the word. And then with the word, everything was created. God was not busy taking hammer and nail and then hitting that let there be C and then there was C. No, he just spoke. So everything is in the word. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 21, verse 36. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. Amen. So stay awake all times. We sleep uh, eight hours. You work eight hours and then you sleep eight hours. <laughs> and uh, some, some years ago, I did some calculation and then I find out that if you are sleeping eight hours every night, the time you get to 60 years, you have been sleeping for 30 years. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it, it sounds funny, but you have been sleeping for 30 years. So you can imagine. You are 60 years and then you sleep. Since the time they gave birth to me, you, you have been sleeping. <laughs> and how long did it take Jesus to even complete his mission? 33 years. And you, you have been sleeping all these years. <laughs> it's very sad. It's very sad. So the Bible is saying that we need to stay awake and pray so that we will be able to escape the temptation that is coming on our way. And the Bible is saying it clearly, meaning that that temptation is going to happen. It's something that was, is born to happen. But for you to escape it, you need to stay awake and pray. You need to stay awake and pray. And this is one thing I've been doing. You know, before daybreak, whatever that will be happening has already happened in the spirit. So if you want your prayer to be very effective, you have to pray in the night. At least 12 to 1. A.M. You pray. Or oh, it's too much. One hour is too much. <laughs> one hour is not a lot. Yeah. One hour is not a lot. At least a Christian, if you are not even good in prayer, you must pray an hour a day. And you can just break it into pieces, you know. Every one hour you pray, maybe 10 minutes. Every one hour you pray 10 minutes. By the close of the day, you will see how many hours you have been praying. So, we just have to go through all this. And it's very important. The reason why you go for prayer session, that somebody must lay his hand on you, is because you are not praying yourself. It's just so. And I believe that those who are supposed to be running to us for prayers, they're supposed to be unbelievers. Not believers. It's because we don't believe in ourselves. We don't want to pray on our own. So the faith is not also there. That's why we run for, uh, to people that they must lay their hands on us. And when they lay their hands on us, we believe that the prayer will work. And one of the statements that we Christians, we always make, and when somebody say that to me, then I, 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 I'm scared. We always say, I'm praying with you. And that is all. They are not praying with you. They just said it, and then it ends there. So, beloved, we need to pray for ourselves. And we have to have a prayer life. Matthew chapter 26, verse 42. 
Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will mm. be done. Amen. Amen. You can imagine. If Jesus of all people is busy praying, who are you not to pray? I mean, the man that you are following, he was busy praying. And we want to sleep. It's not possible. It's not possible. So prayer is very, very important. I mean, you can pray a lot, and then the prayer will be like a storage for you. I know a lot of Christian parents that they have been praying for years, and when they give birth, things are just working out for their children. Even if their children are not born again, things work for them. Why? Because they once have grandmothers that they are Christian, that they, they've been praying for them before they were born. So if you want to compare yourself to those people, it won't work out for you. Sometimes people's life become easy. And then when you check their background, you know that there was once somebody in their family who interceded on their behalf before they were even born. So if you are like me, then you don't have to sleep. For me, I know where I'm coming from. Yeah. You know where I'm coming from. You can even join the thing and then you realize that one of your shoes is not on. And then <laughs> the time you get to the immigration, they will deport you. It, it's a rare story, but it, it seems funny. Mr. Eric, I believe you know that. <laughs> yeah, there was a pastor who, anytime he wants to travel, something will happen at the airport, and then he has to go back home. So one day, his senior pastor decided to do everything that he can do for him to travel. So his senior pastor have these connections. He know big men. So when it was time for them to travel, they got to the airport, and then this pastor was very sick, sadly. They rushed him to the hospital. So they phoned the senior pastor that this is what is happening, and then the senior pastor said, you know what, it's the family. I mean, the people in his family don't want him to travel. So as soon as you guys leave him and then you, you, you go back to your journey, you'll be fine. And then as soon as the plane left, this man became healed. He was fine. So the next year, the pastor decided to try him again. And a lot of things happened. He was able to board the plane anyway because they were praying for him. But when he got to the <laughs> his destination, the funny thing is, this pastor was happy and then he knelt down to pray. And where he was, you don't suppose to know. Because when you do that, they think there's something that you want to do. And then the immigration came with guns and the police. After this man. And the head pastor still have to call big men that he know for them to rescue him. You know? So, ladies and gentlemen, prayer is very, very powerful. But if you want to look down prayer, then you must know your life is at threat. Hallelujah. I hope I'm not scaring you. The next thing is baptism. Baptism. It's also important. So as soon as you enter the church, remember you are the church of God. But as soon as we come together, these are the things that you need to pay attention to. You have to pass through this, this process, which is very, very important. I mean, you can dance for two hours and sweat, but it doesn't change anything. It's not going to, I mean, be able to help you if you do not pass through this process. Baptism. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And Peter said to them, 
Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So if Peter is telling you about baptism, it means it's very important. Because this is the man, Jesus told him, I'll build my church. And he's declaring that you need to be baptized. Are you sure you went through baptism? And I'm not talking about sprinkling water on your body. Yeah. Because I know some people, they just put dip their fingers and then they sprinkle water on you and then you think you baptize. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the real baptism. You need to. The reason why when it comes to baptism, I, to me, is very, very important. I've, I have a witness. The day I got bapti uh, baptized, t a lot of things changed in my life. And I felt like I'm even running mad. Because after I came out from that water, the Lord was speaking to me. You know, when I'm walking, even if you are talking to me, I can't pay attention to you. I was saying, this is not right. This thing is wrong. That thing is wrong. A lot of things. And I was even trying to stop that voice, but I couldn't. For years. More than three years. So, it's through that I was able, uh, God saved me from this anger that I used to have. It's through baptism. But if you do not pay attention, somebody can deceive you that uh, baptism is not forced. But it's very important. The way coffee is very important in the morning. Baptism is also important in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, baptism is also important in the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. Then Jesus came to from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. Amen. Amen. So Jesus came to John, John the Baptist, not Pastor John. Because I'm seeing the way you are happy that I mention your name. <laughs> so Jesus walked to John the Baptist. And then the funny thing was, John the Baptist was trying to stop Jesus. And Jesus was not happy with him. That listen, this is the reason why you are here. And I came here for this. So you have to. You have to. If Jesus, the son of God, the one who knows a lot, have to walk all his way out to be baptized, then who am I? So baptism is very, very important. Those that you are watching us online, I believe you'll be sharing the message so that somebody will be blessed. And if you are there, you are not, you, you've not gone through these things I'm mentioning this morning, you must find yourself in Baruch so that we will help you out. Amen. Yes, so if you are in the church, you have to go through this process. First thing first. These are the things that are very important. You know, these days, there are a lot of things that have been adopted into the church of God. And we are focusing on those things and then we leave these things behind. You, know? you can go to some churches. They have dances and all that. They will be dancing to entertain you. But it's good. But it's not necessary. These are not the things that are going to put you in line when it comes to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Laying hands on you is not going to solve the problem. You need to grow on your own way. You need to. The next thing I will speak about, which is five, is evangelism. So these are the things that we need to pay attention to. 
you need you you have to evangelize. You have to. And this is not pastor's responsibility. It's not the responsibility of ushers. Individual, all of us, we have to. We have to. You have to bring somebody to church. You have, you have to make sure somebody is saved because of you. One of the dangerous things you can do as a Christian, or you can allow yourself to be used as a Christian, is to be a tool in the hands of the enemy. You are born again, yes. You are reading the word, yes. You are praying, yes. You've been baptized, yes. But another step you have to take is to make sure you evangelize. So it's two things. It's either you are used by God or you are used by the enemy. And it's very dangerous that you, are, you call yourself a born-again Christian, but you are the tool of the enemy, which is very dangerous. That's the more reason why you hear a lot of people saying that they are not going to church because they are not expecting you to be doing those things you are doing. Hallelujah. Mark 16, verse 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Amen. So go to the world. This verse doesn't mean that you have to take your car and then you drive to Zimbabwe, Malawi, Cameroon, Ghana, Nigeria. No. But remember, the people that God wants you to speak to them are the people you meet every day. They are the people God wants you to speak to them. Go into the world. You are in the world. So the people that you see on your way going to work, the people that you meet at your workplace, the people in your neighborhood, that you see them every day, you just smile. This is the time for you to evangelize. Speak to them. Encourage them. If you cannot speak to them, maybe you are not good when it comes to the Bible to speak to them. Then convince them, bring them to church, and then the person who is preaching will do that job. So we need to evangelize. Why do I have evangelism as number five? It's because when you start the process, born again, you, have, you are reading the word of God, you have a prayer life, you have been baptized. It's people who are going to do that. They are going to help you so that you will be able to go through those processes. So you also have to mature and make sure people are saved as well. Hallelujah. And the last point I have is to serve. Serving. You have to serve. That's the last thing. And this is the point that we always want to escape it. It's people who are serving, and then you became born again. Remember. It's people who are serving, and then you are able to read the word of God. Remember, it's people who are serving, and then you also have a prayer life. It's people who are serving, and then you became born again. It's people who serve you, and now you have the ability to evangelize. Now it's your turn to serve. Hallelujah. Are you ready to serve? And what are you serving with? To serve is not maybe coming to church and then you clean the church alone. You can serve with your money. I mean, if God blesses you and then you, you have a will that you put all your children on that will and maybe your brothers as well, but you don't have God in your will. Then it's a shame. 
they, it, you have to, there must be a portion that God has to appear in your way. Service is not just coming to church, but you have to serve people who are coming the first time. Maybe speaking to somebody, finding out how somebody is doing, it's also service. The things that will come from your mouth to your neighbor is also a way of giving them service. Hallelujah. So this morning, let me go through the points again before I close for today. The first thing, you need to be born again. Please, can you pay attention because I believe Pastor John is going to ask you next week. That's why I'm repeating the first thing you need to be born again and then number two you have to read the word of God three you have to have a prayer life and then four baptism number five evangelism and then the sixth one oh, okay okay yeah, yeah. oh okay so it's not that you are smart you saw, you saw it okay <laughs> So you need to serve, ladies and gentlemen. You need to serve. Don't wait for Christ before you serve. Because you will not see him. The people Christ is, is looking up to you that you must serve. is the people you are seeing. Those that you are seeing here. Those in your neighborhood. Serve them. And if there's one thing that people can remind you of. is the way you serve people. Hallelujah. Some of us, we can do all these things, but if we don't serve our neighbors, we don't serve in the church. If something happened to you, maybe you will not even remember that you exist. But service is very important because the small things you do are very important in the kingdom of God. This morning, that is what the Lord gave me to share with you. And I want you to practice this. If you have not done any of this, then please, you need to pay attention to this. The complaining, shouting, fighting is not the main reason why we gather here on Sundays. We need to be a blessing as the Lord has been a blessing to us each and every day in our lives. Let us stand. Heaven Father, thank you this morning. Thank you for your word. Father, according to your word, let it be that Father will be the doers of your word, not just listeners, Lord. We declare your power this morning. We declare your presence this morning. That even before we leave this building, Father, speak to our heart, speak to our soul, speak to our mind in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning I declare upon your church that no weapon forms against you shall prosper. Let doors be open unto you. And even as you move out from here, may the Lord visit you even when you sleep in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare protection upon your church this morning. I declare your power upon your church this morning. I declare healing upon your church this morning. I declare sound mind upon your church this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we rebuke the devourer this morning. In the name of Jesus, any weapon formed against you will not prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, as your word says, you will carry us you send forth your angels to carry us in their wings, O oh God. I declare that, Father, may we escape every temptation that will come on our way. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord open your eyes, your spiritual eyes. May the Lord open your spiritual ears so that you will be able to hear him when he speaks to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, for your word says, wherever we are weak, 
we should declare and then you will make us strong, O oh God. So I pray this morning that whatever we shut forth that we are weak, Lord, strengthen us. Strengthen us once more in the mighty name of Jesus. For in our weakness, you show yourself strong. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.